Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan um, coming to you here to talk about the season opening EPL slate. That's very exciting. You know, soccer has been a very fun sport to play last year. And so we hope to continue. I know um, Sheets we have here with me today. Um, I know he has had some successful uh, takedowns in the EPL in the past. So it, welcome. Welcome, Eric. Thanks. You know, I tell you, you know, I, I, I think about all these different sports that I like to play and they all have the different, different characters. And, you know, we'll get into, I guess, you know, what soccer lineup should look like as opposed to other, as opposed to other uh, sports. But what's really, really cool about soccer is that you have all the games starting at the same time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's a, I guess that's a pretty unique situation among team sports. I mean, look, if, if it's a NASCAR race and obviously everybody starts at the same time, right? Um, but most team sports, they kind of spread it out and it's really cool. It's like 10 AM Eastern, literally like on the nose, okay. like it starts. It's not like basketball where they give you like a 10 AM start time. And then you have the national anthem and the introductions and it's like a quarter after 10, but by the time it gets going, if you don't, if you're not there at 10 AM, like it, it, they're all starting and <laughs> you could sweat them all. And it's kind of cool. Cool. I want to ask you like, how you like to sweat these games because, you have you have you have Peacock, right? You mm -hmm. have um, I don't know whether it's Peacock or Paramount covers this also, and sometimes it's on USA Network on the TV. You know, so do you have do you have four screens up when you when you sweat, or do you have you have the TV, or do you not even sweat at all? I mean, how, how do you watch all these games? Yeah, I do, and then kind of like the NFL Red Zone, they have an NBC um goal line channel, I believe now, where they kind of show the, you know, the big plays and all that. So I usually watch that throughout the first half and then yeah, I do have multiple screens up at at times and yeah, I mean that's the best way to do it, just like any sport, right? So And, and what's this NBC goal line? I got to look that one up. Goal zone or goal line or something like that. So yeah, cuz they had they had uh, something like that for the Champions League um mm -hmm. Galazzo. Galazzo. Yep. Yeah, kind of. It's kind of cool. It's kind of like red zone, you know, because the soccer has this reputation for being kind of, you know, like a, a boring sport. But but you have you have this situation where you know they they cut right to like you know what the good stuff that's going on. But what's neat about soccer from a DFS perspective is it's not just goals that 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 people are looking for, you know. So exactly. uh, I don't know. I, I really got into it last year, and what's a little stressful for me and for for I guess a lot of people is that you don't really know the lineups until an hour before before lock and and so basically that's really when everybody has to put their lineups in right between nine and ten o'clock so you got to be ready and then you just kind of just just get it done and when i have to put projections up too i really only have like a half an hour to do it <laughs> because i have to do whatever but i i, I really enjoy it um I, the it's it's you're never exactly sure whether you're winning or losing because you have you have clean sheet bonuses that are kind of waiting to be tacked on. You have goalie win bonuses that are waiting to be tacked on. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I think I think it's I definitely think it's a cool sport. And I want to learn a little bit more about it this uh, this season. So I'm going to pay more attention to the videos and, and, and that. So so I'll just kind of turn it over to you. I mean, we got listen, we got four games as almost yeah. almost usually. Right. And and why why don't you talk about who you like and whatever? And if I feel like chiming in, I will. Otherwise, it's just kind of like turn it over to you. Okay. Yeah. Sounds great. Um, yeah, it's a, it's another four game slate. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of four game slates on Saturdays. So, which is a good sizable slate uh, for us. Um, you know, uh, just overall, overall, like from the DFS soccer DFS standpoint, um, as, as sheets mentioned that, you know, uh, the, the, first of all, the popularity of the sport is growing and DK recognizes that. So I have seen the, the size of the contest, the prize pools have gone up over the years and we also have um this year is going to be a special one because we also have the world cup that's coming up um and cutter so that's going to be kind of like overlapping with the premier league obviously some players from the premier epl are going to play in that world cup tournament so we're just going to have to keep our eyes out when is when the, is the world cup i think november uh okay. early like late winter um or at the end of by the end of this year sometime um i don't know the exact dates but um so that's going to be an interesting dynamic as to who's going to be called up to the national team for each country and all that. So, so we'll keep our eyes out on that and I'll update on that as well throughout the season. 
But for EPL, yeah, it's starting this weekend. Very exciting. Um, on this slate in particular, um, we have two sizable favorites. Um, first of all, first one is Tottenham um, versus Southampton um, at minus 300 at, for Tottenham. Um, and then we have Newcastle against Nottingham. Newcastle is a favorite at minus 149, minus 150. Um, and then we have Aston Villa on the road at plus 110, uh, plus 100. Um, against Bournemouth and then uh, Leeds United at home as a favorite slight favorite at you know uh, Wolverham uh, against Wolverhampton so how I usually go about in these videos is that I just talk about the favorites the biggest favorite first because really that's going to be the more chalky plays and frankly probably better plays in soccer than any other sport um, because in soccer possession really matters um, whoever whichever team has the ball more tends to create more chances, which is very important for soccer DFS purposes. So for Tottenham, um, you know, for those of you who may have played soccer DFS last year, Son and Kane uh, are the two juggernauts that scored a lot of DFS points. Um, Son is probably the safest cash play and highest floor play on the slate. Um, he takes corner kicks, uh, sometimes free kicks, and he has a lot of assist upside and he shoots a lot. So Son and Kane, and Kane is more of a GPP play, but he takes penalty kicks. So those are the two favorite plays, obviously, for Tottenham. And that they are probably going to be the chalkiest plays on the slate. So if you want to fade one of them and only play one of them, you know, I understand because both of them are the highest priced guys on the slate, on, the, on DraftKings. So, you know, pick and choose, but Son is a safer play in terms of uh, cash plays. So let me Let me ask you, so is it, when you have two high price guys like this, is it usually, um, I'm just, uh, look, obviously every slate is different, but is it, is it usually the case that you really can't play both of them that, that you really want to pick one or one of the other, or are there some slates where you can, you can jam both these guys in and is this one of those slates? Or like you said, is, is one of these guys more of a, an upside play than the other one, or is one of them more of a cash play than the other one? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Generally, you want to play one of them in cash plays um, because you cannot afford. And then, and frankly, on this slate, there are some defenders that you would want to pay up for. Um, it depends on, you know, what other positions have to offer as well. But for this slate in particular, it's very interesting because Son and Kane, they like to pass to each other. Um, there have been a lot of goals in the past where they link up and obviously that doubles your upside between goals and assists. So that's going to be the case here. So you want to pair them up if you can. But like I said, there are some defenders that you want, want to pay up uh, uh, for here on the slate. Um, but for cash plays, I prefer Son. For GPP, I prefer Kane. Um, for GPPs, I would also play both of them. Um, and then also for Kane, if you are playing Kane, I would definitely uh, match up him with uh, a crosser like Sessegnon or Doherty because Kane is a better header. Um, and there's a good chance that Doherty or Sessegnon can cross the ball and Kane can head, head the ball in. And obviously that gives you the double upside there as well. So, but Tottenham being the biggest favorite on the slate, um, really like if you need to kind of punt or trying to find the value play, I would just play any of these guys, you know, in the middle and central midfielder um, where there's not that much upside, uh, a much upside or floor, uh, much floor, but there is an upside where they can get the, end, you know, get the get on the end of the of a goal for son or kane so so it's interesting kind of... so, so it's interesting so 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 i think you're answering one of my questions here so between these guys son and kane you, you mentioned that if you wanted to play kane it's a good idea to play these these crossers which would be ryan or and or darty so now we're talking about maybe like stacking and things like that right so so you think it's probably a good idea to play Darty and Kane together or Rot or or Ryan and Kane together or maybe is it is it is it too much to ask to ask to play all three of them together um and then I guess a light question is 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 Son more of a guy you'd want to play on his own uh, as opposed to with with Darty and and Ryan I think you on this lay I think you definitely want to have at least two players on yeah. from Tottenham so whether that be Son and Kane, that would be the obviously the ideal situation. But if you are pairing up, let's say Son and then Doherty or Sessegnon, yeah, I mean, it can happen. Um, I can definitely see Sessegnon pass the ball to Son and Son scores. Yeah, I mean, 
but I, I like I said, I, I only emphasize the Kane aspect of it because Kane is a better header than Son, mm -hmm. and more likely than not, crossers get the highest upside when there's a good heading striker up there on the field. So I think that's kind of where I am in terms of the ideal builds with Sessegnon and Doherty. But I can definitely see, yeah, I mean, Son is, you know, he, he was a DFS juggernaut last year. Um, I would definitely, you know, include him in most of my lineups, but okay. his ownership will be the highest on this slate. So. And then on Southampton is very interesting because um, on any other given slate, you would want to play James Ward Prowse. I'm sure, you know, she's, you know, I remember and, him. Yeah. Yeah. So he is, he has, he always averages like plus 10, 10 plus points. I mean, he's just a guaranteed 10, 10 plus points uh, player for DFS purposes. But today, I mean, tomorrow there, you know, Southampton is going to have the toughest uh, matchup against Tottenham. But Tottenham is also not the type of like a team like Man City or Liverpool um, where they like to dominate ball possession. Tottenham really links up their plays more based on like counterattacks and just creating long, you know, long ball plays. So really, I think South that favors Southampton's plays, in my opinion, like James Ward Prowse. I mean, he, you know, uh, it's more of a possession guy where he likes to get fouled and he likes to take free kicks, corner kicks, all the set pieces. Um, and he does have the assist upside and, you know, uh, um, goal upside as well. But like I said, just given the tough matchup, um, I think I'll probably shy away from playing him, but I do think Tottenham's play style favors Southampton, even though Southampton is the biggest underdog on the slate. So I would definitely want to play him in some of my lineups, uh, J JWP. Um, so that's probably the only piece on Southampton that I'll be interested in, though. And then the second matchup of the day that has the biggest favorite um, or big big favorite is Newcastle. Um, this is def definitely what I was talking about when you want to pay up for defenders. Kieran Trippier, um, that name may be recognized by some, some of you guys, and then Matt Target. Their fullbacks, um, Target and Trippier, were really, really good last year, especially after Trippier joined Newcastle midseason. Um, Trippier takes a lot of the set pieces and same for target, but Trippier has more of more has more of a, an assist upside that can probably link up with Callum Wilson. So those three guys are probably my favorite plays on Newcastle. Uh, but like I said, if I definitely want to have a piece of Trippier or target um, at my defender position in my DFS lineup, um, because they really have the probably the have the highest floor um, other than Son on this slate, in my opinion. And they're playing, they have a favorable matchup against non Nottingham Forest. Uh, some of you may not recognize that team name because they just got promoted uh, from the tier below uh, in the league. Um, so they are now promoted to the EPL. So welcome to the EPL, Nottingham, For Nottingham Forest. But um, it's going to be a tough matchup for them. So I don't think I would want any of the pieces for, from Nottingham. <laughs> um, but, you know, Newcastle, yeah, definitely want some pieces. I mentioned those three pieces, Target, Trippier, and Wilson. But for GPP purposes, yeah, I mean, I think Joliton and then ASM and then Guimaraes. I think those are the three guys that I would keep my eyes out on for GPP purposes because I do think um, Newcastle has played and more of an open play play style. And when I say that, what I mean is, um, you know, they're not the type of team like where, where I talked about, they dominate the ball possession. They like to kind of counterattack and create a lot of chances that way. So I think that's going to create um, tons of chances for Newcastle and tons of crossing opportunities on the run, um, on the counterattack for Target and Trippier. So that's why I like them a lot here on, on this slate. And then the third matchup on the slate is Aston Villa versus Bournemouth. Um, Bournemouth is another um, team that got promoted to the EP EPL. Um, Aston Villa is on the road, but I think they should win this matchup still. Um, Bournemouth was pretty 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 good um, in the in the championship uh, tier um, for the for the English soccer uh, in their respective league from which they got promoted. Um, but Aston Villa, I'll talk about Aston Villa first because Aston Villa has some pieces that I would like to target as well, um, including Lucas Digne. Um, that's the first guy that I always look at. I know he used to play for Everton, but now he got traded to Aston Villa last season. 
And then his production level did not decrease, um, even though he switched teams. He likes to go up and down and cross the ball. And in soccer DFS, that's really important um, because it creates not only the floor, but also the assist upside um, if, they, if, if his crosses end up resulting in a goal for any of these strikers or forwards. Um, so I would definitely prefer Digne over anybody on Aston Villa. Um, but in terms of GPP, yeah, I would definitely target Watkins or Bailey. Bailey had a really good uh, preseason um, performance. I know he scored multiple goals uh, in, in his last uh, preseason match that he played in. So Bailey is in good form already. So I would definitely target him. And I think he provides good value uh, for what it's worth. Um, and then Coutinho is another good GPP play. Um, I know he got injured throughout the mid midseason last year, but um, he definitely has the upside to score a brace or even a hat trick um, on any given day. So um, I would just target those three guys and then Digne for uh, Aston Villa. And then on the other side of the matchup is Bournemouth. Um, Bournemouth, I would probably target Jaden Anthony because he takes a set, he takes a you know part of the set pieces, and then Ryan Christie, so number thirty-two and number ten. Um, for those of you who may not be be familiar with these players, um, Anthony has been the probably the engine uh, for Bournemouth's uh, promotion uh, last year um, in their league. They finished first in their league, respectively. Um, and Anthony was the reason why they were very successful. Um, so I like Anthony to play okay here against a tough, tough in a tough matchup against Aston Villa, but they're at home. So I do think they'll show up um, and they'll perform pretty well. And like I said, they finished first in their league. So I don't think they're, you know, I don't think they're as bad as like Nottingham Forest. I think Bournemouth is pretty a little tier tier above Nottingham Forest. So I think they'll show up and Anthony will be an interesting piece. I think that most, you know, a lot, not a lot of people will have on this slate. So that's my sneaky uh, GPP play, I think, in my opinion, for uh, well, let, me, let, let me see. Let me let me put a narrative out there for you just based on what you just said. So so AF so Bournemouth, they were in a, a lower level league and they just got promoted to EPL. Yeah. And and correct me if I'm wrong. So they're at home. Yes. And this is their, like their home opener in the EPL. I mean, that, yeah. this crowd's going to be <laughs> going nuts. Right. I know, I mean, right? This is. Uh, mm -hmm. um. Yeah, these these are usually the types of teams I like. I like to play in sports, you know. Like, yeah. like uh, I mean, you're, they're de you're definitely going to get their best shot, you know. Mm -hmm. And they've definitely been looking for this for this uh, for this game or whatever it is. So um, I don't know. So so for the, so the Bournemouth guys, you would suggest Christie, Anthony, and uh, probably Solanke and for probably goal, Solanke. goal upside. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. And Bournemouth had been an EPL before, like oh, three, okay. four, or five years ago. Okay. But it was a while ago, but now they're back. I mean, yeah, but still, the home crowd will go crazy. And it's such a big deal for that team, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think they're going to show up as well. And then the last matchup on the slate is Leeds United and Wolverhampton. Um, I'll just put it out there that Leeds United, I targeted a lot of Leeds United matches and their opponents last year. I remember this. Leeds United has there they just have so many holes on defense and they like to play in the open uh play where they just back and forth, back and forth, creating chances. And so I think it's gonna be the same <laughs> again this year. They didn't really they didn't really make that many significant changes. They actually sold to their two best players to other teams, Rafinha and Calvin Phillips. Um, yeah, Arsenal. what happened to him? Okay, where's Rafinha now? Rafinha is at Barcelona. Okay. Um, and Calvin Phillips is actually for Man City, Manchester City. So okay. I don't know if he'll get enough playing time there, but still he went there and now Leeds United's best players are Jack Harrison and Brandon Aronson, in my opinion, that have the highest upside, um, highest floor rather. So Jack Harrison will most likely take a lot of the set pieces that Rafinha used to take. Rafinha was actually, he had a monopoly on all, all of those yeah. for Leeds United, but now... It's going to be spread it out, I think, depending on how the coaches see it. Um, but I think I pr I predict that Jack Harrison takes some and then Brendan Aronson takes some. And then maybe Mark Roca because he just came over and he used to take some set pieces for Bayern Munich uh, when he used to play. 
but just given that central mid position, there's not much kill, uh, not kill upside for sorry, not much of upside um for for the goals and assists there. So I would prefer much uh for Harrison and Aronson, and Aronson is American guy, um American player that I'm very high on. Um, he came over from uh Salzburg and either Austria or Germany, I forgot which one, but he was a Salzburg's in Austria. I know that. Yeah. Austria. So he was a really good player for them. Um, Now he got signed. He got transferred to Leeds United, which I think he will thrive in that open play style that they like to play in. Um, So I I have very high hopes for him and I think he's going to be taking some of the set pieces. So I I really like him here on the slate um, along with Jack Harrison and, if anything, Leeds United likes to push the ball a lot, so I think they will create a lot of chances. Um, I would definitely pair them up, uh, either of them up, with Bamford. Um, Bamford coming off of an injury. Um, he actually had a pretty good preseason uh, the past few weeks, so I would definitely target them together. Um, in terms of Wolverhampton on the other side, um, this is going to be one of my core plays right here. Um, Pedro Neto. Um, two years ago, he was one of the highest scoring DFS players, soccer players um, in the EPL. Um, he took he had the monopoly on set pieces and assist upside. He not shy from taking shots on the goal. Um, and he's coming back, you know, from the injuries last year. He came back in the last month or so uh, for Wolves um, and he did OK. But there's a rumor that he's, you know, back in full fitness and full shape and everything. So, you know, just going back to his old days two years ago before the injury, I mean, he was a dominant guy for that team. Um, I I predict fully expect him to take all the set pieces as well. So I really like Pedro Neto. That's going to probably be one of one of the plays that I'll have in every single one of my lineups, I think. Um, So I would definitely prefer him here on this slate. And I think he has, I mean, just as much upside as, let's say, Son or Kane, I think, in my opinion. Um, it's just that, you know, uh, they're playing, <laughs> he's playing on the Wolves, but he they're playing against the Leeds, um, who like to give up a lot of chances. So I like the matchup as well um, there, so. Um, yeah, so anyway. Before, so I, before, I, you, before you leave this game, is there anybody else you can give me from the... Um... From the NATO side that, that I could pair with him or or it's just him, you think? Yeah, so him and then it depends on who starts at okay. the top. Um Jimenez is out that you usually see him at top for the wolves, but he's not starting. Traore is out, and then I know Huang is out for the Wolves. So Potence, yeah, I mean, I would definitely target Potence and NATO together. Um Potence takes a lot of shots for that team. Um, so NATO likes to create chances and I can definitely see them pairing, uh, linking together. Um, so really I would just target NATO with any striker, whoever the striker is for the wolves. Um, it it could be a very cheap one if they start, uh, um, I forgot his name, but they used to start for the wolves last year. Um, but Podence takes the most shots. I'm just looking at the, the, the projected starting lineup to see who would take a lot of shots. Podence and the Neves are probably the two guys here on this in the, on this screen that takes the most shots aside from NATO. So I would definitely link those up. Now, yeah. with respect respect to, to goalies, last time we did this, you had mentioned that that basically the idea is to just take the cheapest goalie and just kind of just jam him in. Um, yeah. Is is did did I mean I didn't really track it or whatever it was, but but is that still kind of the recommendation, you know, the, the see that the weird thing about the way goalies get scored in, uh, in soccer is it, you almost, Oh, you almost, I don't say, I don't, I don't mean to say you don't want to win, but the win is less important than just being able to, to get shots fired at you. You know what I mean? Um, so, so how, how, how do you rate goalies? I mean, what do you think about this slate goalies in general? Any, any thoughts on that? Yeah. So I, I would, Fill out your forward, midfielder, defender positions, and then kind of think about the goalkeeper position after after all of that. That should be your last position to think about. So okay. obviously you want to link, you want to kind of align them. You want to kind of align them with um, your rest of the lineup. So if you have a lot of the Tottenham players, if you have a lot of the, you know, Leeds players, 
then yeah, I mean, you want to get the goalie from the Leeds or Tottenham. You don't want to get a goalie from the Wolves or Southampton because you're expecting your players at different positions to score goals. Um, so you don't want to negatively correlate your goalkeeper position with the rest of your lineups. But in terms of who who to play and the cheapest thing, yeah, I mean, I would definitely target the cheapest if that means I can move up um, any of my defenders or forwards uh, in terms of pricing. Um, the reason for that is um, you mentioned like you get five points for DFS purposes for a win. And really, like if you think you can get I mean, I can get five points by, let's say, like six, seven crosses. Right. Like if Digne, you know, throughout the 90 minutes, um, I I am banking on Digne probably get at least seven, eight crosses. Right. So and that's more of a guaranteed outcome, in my opinion. Um, you know, compared to let's say Jose Sa getting a clean sheet or a win, um, because really one goal can change that clean sheet bonus, and that can happen by the hands of by the feet of you know the opposing player, but also your own guy. Like there has been a lot of games where the, <laughs> there were a lot of own goals scored by your own team, and and that can just you know defeat your uh, goalkeeper upside. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely target the cheapest one if you can, but not negatively correlate the rest of your lineups. But yeah, so I, I think that kind of does it for the slate analysis. Um, like I said, Tottenham pieces are going to be the most popular pieces, um, just given the odds. Um, but I really like Tottenham, but also Newcastle, especially their fullbacks. And then Bournemouth as like a sneaky GPP, uh, you know, stacks there um, with Anthony Christie and then Solanke. And then, you know, I really like Pedro Nato for the Wolves, but I like the Leeds United pieces as well with Aronson and Harrison and and Bamford. Uh, those so, two. So, so for the Bournemouth, it would be Anthony Christie and Solanke. Solanke. Yeah. Their fullbacks do not cross the ball as much as like, let's say okay. other uh, fullbacks on the team. So maybe Adam Smith, but I would definitely target Anthony or Christie and then pair them, pair him up with Solanke. So, well, well, that's great. I'm looking forward to, uh, to tomorrow. So for those of you who are watching this, I mean, you can, um, if there's any major, if there's any starters that, you know, impact the, the slate or whatever that, that aren't playing, I'm sure that Chan or will will get into the Discord at least and at least you know uh, update everybody on that. I'm gonna try try to put projections and sheets up for for that probably about a half hour before before lock and look. I'm looking forward to it. So so you mentioned by the way, so you have a minute. Um, glad we're finishing up this now because we talked about this team, the uh, Born of that that got it got into the league. I was thinking about this. We we have um. I'm really upset because we, we have the LEC slate about to start in about 15 minutes. And, <laughs> and my favorite team, the team that you turned me on to like Misfits. a year ago, who who never seems to disappoint is, is disbanding the Misfits. Misfits. Yeah. I can't believe that. They, they, they're my, my, literally my favorite team. They always deliver and yeah. uh, they're going to be disbanding. I mean, uh, I'm going to have to start my own team and start with Vito and, and, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll take over the, we'll, we'll take over the, uh, the LEC next year. Yeah, always play, uh, you know, uh, misfits or their opponent, and yeah. you'll get a favorable outcome. So, yeah. anyway, well, thanks, 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 sheets, and I hope you guys, uh, you know, wish you guys good luck out there. And if you guys have any questions, you can reach out to me at DFS Chan on Twitter or on Discord on the True DFS channel. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend. Thanks.